Hello friends, today we are going to discuss uh, a child presenting with foreign body aspiration. So the learning objectives of this presentation are an approach to a child presenting with a history of foreign body aspiration. When to suspect this? What is the presentation and what is the management? The airway foreign bodies are common pediatric emergencies and they can be fatal if not immediately taken care of and treated. And if you look at all the foreign body aspirations, 80% of the cases are in children less than 3 years of age. And the peak is between 1 to 2 years of age. So the most common age group uh, which presents with an aspirated foreign body in a child is 1 to 2 years of age. The commonest site is right main bronchus or bronchus intermedius as per some reports. Uh, the commonly encountered foreign bodies in children include organic matter like peanuts, betel nuts and bones, fruit seeds, coins and toys. The clinical manifestations of foreign bodies can be divided into three stages. The first stage is the most violent uh, paroxysm of cough, choking and gagging. So at this stage probably it is the easiest to diagnose that the child has aspirated a foreign body because this is sudden and apparently well child who was otherwise playing well and suddenly he develops a violent bout of cough, he is choking, he is gagging. This is where the foreign body should be suspected. Then comes the second stage. This stage is tricky because in this stage after the initial paroxysm of cough, choking, cough, gagging, the foreign body becomes lodged. The reflexes, they fatigue out. So the violent coughs now stops. Now child, child continues to have respiratory symptoms, but they will not be as dramatic as they were in the initial stage. And the immediate irritating symptoms also subside. This stage is, is the one where the diagnosis is delayed and the foreign body is overlooked. And the physician is assured, reassured by the absence of symptoms. So probably this is the most important stage for a clinician not to miss a foreign body aspiration in a child. Because if the initial event has happened and thereafter the child is having any persistent symptoms, then a foreign body has to be ruled out. The third stage is of complications when the foreign body has been there for long, he has not been removed. It can result in obstruction of the airway, it can result in erosion, it can result in infection. So an obstruction can result in, result in collapse of a particular lobe, collapse of even one hemithorax, so depending on how complete the obstruction is. If the obstruction is bal valve type, there would be a distal hyperinflation. If there is an erosion because of a chronic foreign body, you can have hemoptysis. An infection can present as a pneumonia where you have uh, fever, cough, respiratory distress. Uh, so a foreign body can, radiologically speaking, can have a variable presentation. It can present as a localized collapse, atelectasis. It can present as localized hyperinflation if it, the obstruction is bal valve kind of a thing. It can present as pneumonia also. So if you see the figure on the left side is showing a partial kind of an obstruction and on the right side there is complete obstruction. In the left side the bal valve type of an obstruction results in hyperinflation of the lobe because the airway can go, air can go inside the lungs but now cannot move out so the lobe gets hyperinflated. Whereas where there is complete collapse there is no movement of air which is possible so the lobe collapses resulting in atelectasis. When you are approaching a child who has a history of foreign body aspiration, the history probably is the most important lead here. Uh, so if you have a positive history that the child was eating something which he cannot chew, something like peanut, uh, betel nut or something like this, and, and he had an episode of coughing and choking along with that, then this positive history should never be ignored. This child, if he continues to have any kind of a symptom, he merits a further workup. If there is negative history but the radiology suggests a foreign body then then again this child should not be left alone because negative histories can be misleading. In a very small child they may not uh, tell that uh, they have aspirated a foreign body. So it's at times a negative history does not mean much in a very small child. If there is episode of choking and coughing with wheezing it is highly suggestive of a foreign body aspiration. So comprehensive physical examination is to be done. It should include the nose, oral cavity, 
pharynx, neck and lungs. So it is not uncommon that the child has aspirated a foreign body in the lungs but there is one lying in the nose also. So a complete examination should be done. There could be more than one foreign body. What is the role of imaging in a child who presents uh, with a foreign body, history of foreign body aspiration? If you look at chest x-ray, this probably is the uh, first line investigation that you have the most easily available these days but the problem is most of the foreign bodies that small children aspirate most of them are organic foreign bodies which are non radio radio opaque so in a in a radiograph you will not be able to identify a foreign body but then you will have indirect signs which will tell you that there is a foreign body stuck somewhere so these indirect signs are you have an asymmetric hyperinflation that a particular lobe a particular lung is hyperinflated you could there could be an obstructive emphysema you could have atelectasis of a particular part of a lung you could have consolidation you will have mediastinal shift but the most important thing to realize over here is a negative chest x-ray i mean the normal chest x-ray does not rule out a foreign body so some books would say that in uh, in addition to an inspiratory film an expiratory film should also be done uh, that is the way uh, uh, foreign bodies may be identified but a normal chest x-ray does not rule out a foreign body so what is the role of a ct scan uh, the, the role of ct scan in foreign body aspiration is still being explored again it detects um, uh, some radiolucent foreign bodies also but the problem is it has a risk of radiation so the caveat here is a high index of suspicion should be maintained despite a negative or inconclusive imaging and in such children a bronchoscopy should be performed so if a bronchoscopy is to be done then which one would you do so there are two kinds of bronchoscopies that we know of one is a rigid bronchoscope and another one is a flexible bronchoscope rigid bronchoscope has to be inserted with a child under a, a ga uh, completely paralyzed and the uh, child can be ventilated through this uh, rigid bronchoscope so the rigid bronchoscope has an advantage that it takes care of ventilation that ventilating a child through a, through a rigid bronchoscope is easier and nowadays with the availability of uh, optical forceps it's relatively easier to remove a foreign body with a rigid bronchoscope the uh, instruments that can be used in a rigid bronchoscope are much more sturdy so uh, the first rigid bronchoscopy was done by gustav kilian and uh, he used uh, it to remove a fish bone from the throat and currently rigid bronchoscopy is considered the gold standard as far as management and removal of foreign body is concerned but the problem is that even with rigid bronchoscopies you may have a failed extraction which is which can happen in 0.3 to 7% of cases as if you see different reports uh, but the advantage of rigid bronchoscope is that you have a better control of airway and it allows passage of forceps and baskets the other option that we have is a flexible bronchoscope now it has a limited role so if you have a child who has a definite foreign body aspiration uh, probably the first uh, uh, attempt should be with a rigid bronchoscope only so uh, diagnostics uh, the, the role is there if suppose you are suspecting foreign body in a child based on some radiology based on some symptom but there is no clear history of the initial episode of choking coughing or gagging in that scenario probably a flexible bronchoscopy can be done before a rigid bronchoscopy uh, uh, but if you have a clear history of a foreign body aspiration then rigid bronchoscopy should be done before a flexible bronchoscopy therapeutic role of flexible bronchoscopy is there only if the rigid bronchoscopy fails and uh, the scenarios where flexible bronchoscope has an advantage over rigid bronchoscope is that the uh, foreign body is lodged very peripherally uh, deep in the airway and rigid bronchoscopes cannot go very deep and uh, there are reports with experienced hands uh, e uh, even under conscious sedation even flexible bronchoscopy are safe and effective there are reports from china there are reports from india where uh, uh, flexible bronchoscope has been used extensively to remove foreign bodies 
the advantage of uh, flexible bronchoscope is um, as as we have just seen that it reaches uh, difficult to access airways and these are like right upper lobe bronchus it 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 in a way when you are doing a bronchoscopy the right upper lobe turns upward so in a rigid scope sometimes this may uh, foreign body hair may be difficult to visualize and the basal segments of the lower lobe especially in a relatively bigger child the bronchoscopes um, do are, are not able to reach to the lower lobes uh, the another advantage of flexible bronchoscopy is that if you have an experienced expert hand who can do this under uh, conscious sedation then you don't have to depend on busy ot times the disadvantage of course um, it it uh, hinders ventilation so uh, when you insert a flexible scope it further compromises the airway so ventilation here is less controlled so there are reports where people have used um, a flexible bronchoscope through a rigid bronchoscope so and and they say that it gives the best of both rigid and flexible bronchoscopy that uh, ventilation is supported through, through the rigid scope while the access to deeper airway is through the flexible scope so take home message of this presentation is that sudden onset respiratory symptoms uh, the foreign body should always be considered in a child and the asymptomatic interval after the initial uh, violent phase uh, is is very very important and if the child has any persistence of symptoms or any persistence of examination finding or any abnormal radiology the uh, effort should be made to do a bronchoscopy in this child and the definitive diagnosis and the definitive management is on bronchoscopy only thank you for watching this video please help us improve the content by commenting in the comment section or emailing at the link given below especially regarding the length of this video anything which can be removed or anything which can be added or any other comment and suggestion thank you so much